All right, guys, in this video, I have a 2019 Kia Sedona, and customer complaint is that the check engine is on. So the first step we're gonna do is start the engine. And as you can see, check engine light is on. We'll stop that. And there wasn't really any drivability issues or concerns from the customer, just that the check engine light was on. So what we're gonna do is scan the vehicle. We're gonna take the Maxi Sys. We are going to go with <coughs> the standalone diagnostics. That looks about right. Sorry about that. I had to push. I helped somebody push in a car. So we're going to go USA. We're going to go yes. We are going to go diagnosis. We're going to do an auto scan. And while this is going through, I will pause you guys. All right, so now that's done. Now we're gonna click on engine because that's our primary concern. There was no other codes in any of the other systems. We're gonna go read codes. And we're gonna see what codes we have. We have a P0193 active fuel rail pressure sensor circuit high input. So, first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take and we're going to see what code setting criteria is and maybe a little description. And from there, we're going to go on and start diagnosing the system. Alright, so I checked the code setting criteria real quick. And it basically says that the this code is generated when it basically sees the signal shorted to battery voltage. Now, I don't think that the signal is actually shorted to battery voltage. But I could be wrong. I just think it means when it sees a higher than uh, anticipated voltage when the key is on and uh, engine is off. So what we're going to do is we are going to go verify our voltages at the fuel rail pressure sensor connector. And we're going to see what we have and what we don't have. And before that, we're going to go and we're going to look at the wiring diagram quick. Now this is our fuel rail pressure sensor right here. And from what I can tell... We have our sensor power that's going to be a 5 volt. Our sensor signal, which is going to be 5 volt, and, and unless it's plugged in, which then the signal should take a, the voltage should drop to an acceptable level. And our sensor ground, which is directly from the PCM. So everything is sent out from our ECM. So we have 5 volts unplugged, 5 volts unplugged, and our sensor ground. And plugged in, which is to see 5 volts. Our signal should drop down in voltage. Probably about uh, between 1 and 2 volts with the key on engine off and our sensor ground should always be there. So we're going to take and we are going to start diagnosing this concern now. Alright, so now we're going to start diagnosing this problem. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have our two 5 volt signals. Uh, two 5 volt, uh, 5 volts, one on our signal and one on to our power and also our ground. And that connector travels all the way under the intake to the fuel rail pressure sensor. So the first thing we're gonna do is unplug, and we're going to locate our wires. And if we come onto the wiring diagram, focusing on this for you guys. So we have a green, an orange, and a red. So we have green, orange, red. Our green is our ground, our orange is our signal, and our red is our power. So that's what we're gonna check for first. So, I'm going to grab a T-pin, focus in on this, alright, now, it said red, orange, and green. Now, if I come onto this side, I have red, orange, and green. So, we're going to check our red for our power. I'll bring this guys up for you. Hopefully, you guys can see it. So I just connected my multimeter to battery ground. And now what I'm going to do is just touch onto my red, which would be this guy. And I'll move out of the way so you guys can see. I have 5 volts. 
And then my orange was my signal, which I have also have five volts. And then we had a ground, so I'll just, I just switched over to battery positive, and now we're gonna check our ground from the PCM, which was green, which is this guy. And as you can see, we have a ground. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug in the connector, and we're gonna see what our voltages are with the connector plugged in. And I wanna see roughly about the same thing. So my ground was my green, which was this guy. We'll see if my ground is good when it's plugged in. 12. Then we're gonna check in our power and our signal. I gotta change that over to ground. As you see, I have five volts onto my power. And now we're just gonna check our signal, which should be roughly about 0.5 volts. Uh, 1.5 volts to two volts. And I am connected and we have nothing. Be connected properly. Let's see if I can connect this. Our signal. Which is this guy? We have, on our signal we have 4.98 volts, almost five volts. So to me that's not good. Okay, that means that there is an open somewhere into the system, which is going to be from this area all the way down to my fuel rail, uh, fuel rail pressure sensor. Now, I'm gonna do a little trick that I like to do. It's a bypass test, and it's done with a test light. So, if you guys remember, our code was active into the system. So we're gonna recode. And our code is active. Okay? Now, if I take my test light, I'm using an LED test light for this one. My LED test light, I connect my LED test light to ground, and I touch my signal wire. I don't know if you guys see how my LED test light is lit, but now what I'm gonna do is come back to the home, no, not to the home, Sorry, I'm gonna come back one to my diagnostics, and now I'm gonna read codes again. So now, as you can see, my code is now in history. Now, why did my code go in history? Well, it's because I actually added a resistance through my test light onto the system. And uh, what that resistance does is that it puts the system working properly at 3.5 volts, which I can show you guys with this guy. So as you can see, I'm at five volts, and now when I take my LED test light and I touch, my voltage drops to 3.5 volts, which is probably an acceptable range for the sensor to be working. Now, it doesn't mean that's the right range, but it, it is an acceptable range for the system. So, with that being said, my issue is not onto my PCM side, which is over on this side, but it's more onto my connector side, which is over here. Now I might have an issue in this connector, or I might have an issue down at the connector underneath. So we're going to have to check that. So now I just disconnected my uh, connector from its holding spot, and I'm just going to touch onto this wire, which is my signal wire. And as you can see, I still have 4.98 volts. So that means that my voltage is going through the whole wire. So my issue is going to be either into the wiring or the sensor itself but I have to verify that first, so the intake is gonna have to come off in order for me to verify that. So that's gonna be the next step. All right, so now I have all the intake taken off. I also have to take off a plenum piece underneath. Now, before you go and you start doing any work, take put rags along this area. That way nothing falls into your uh, intake ports. 
I had blown out the with air, but there's still some. So we're just gonna take cover up everything. Make sure nothing falls in. And now we're gonna start testing from this connector all the way down to that connector. We got the multimeter, and we're gonna be testing resistance on those wires. So, here we have a brown, a gray, and a black. And we're just gonna compare with the connector down here which we have a ground, a red, uh, a gray, a brown, and a black. So we're just gonna be connecting and testing the resistance of the whole wire. We're gonna start with the brown. I can't even move the connector. Try to give you guys a better visual. Try to prop it up here. So some of me have noticed that my connector for my fuel roll pressure sensor is still connected. Now since my computer is completely disconnected from the circuit at this point, there is actually no danger in me testing three the three individual wires for excessive resistance. Now, if I find any excessive resistance on some of the wires, I might have to disconnect in order to do further testing. Oh, that looks good. All right. So, I'm going to start with this one. And we're going to go all the way down to the other. And that's open. Either it's open or I'm not touching. Okay, so now we're going to test another wire. We're going to go on to the black. And we're going to move this one to the black. Don't have anything. Again, nothing. I might be taking this connector off to verify it. Black and black. Oh, there we go. We have zero ohms on that one. Because I just wasn't pushing hard enough. That's black. I'm going to go back to the brown. Retry this. Point one, point two. And the last one is the gray. Nope. Gray is at point three, point three ohms. So. So from what I can tell, my wiring is okay, so it probably does just need a sensor. And there's not really any other test that can be done as far as this goes. Alright guys, here's the after repair video. I am now hooked onto my signal wire for my fuel tank, uh, fuel, for my fuel rail pressure sensor. And if I come up onto my multimeter, you guys see I now have 1.7 volts. Now that 1.7 volts is normal, it should be roughly between I normally give it 1.5, 1.8 volts with key on, engine off onto these vehicles. So with that being said, 
This is a repair. And I'll show you guys fault codes just in case. Come on, come on. And I'll do a rescan. And as you can see, it says engine good. And if we come down here to state, it says history pending. We have none. We come back over onto current. We have none. So I would consider this one a fix. And the check engine is also off inside the vehicle. I'll show you guys that at the same time. So now I'm going to just start the car. And as you can tell, the check engine is now off. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video and if you did please like subscribe and comment and I will see you guys next time.